Besides Amélie, today I'm going to practice the second movement of In the Myth Sonata. Um, and I will also answer your questions. Um, well, I will answer the questions regarding the second movement of the In the Myth Sonata live uh, when you ask them. But the other questions that are unrelated, I will answer them at the end when I'm done playing the, the piece. So, um, there's another video about the first movement that's already out. Um, so the second movement, it starts directly with the piano on a, on a piano note, on a soft note. Um, so we're going to have to look at the... Um, the uh, articulation on that first note. I'm looking for the second movement here. I know what the piano is doing, but where is it? Ah, I have it. So it's bum, ba -ding, ba -ding. So it's pretty easy to put together this spot. Okay, so when I have to play a soft note in the beginning like that, and I want the articulation to be nice and I put my tongue there and then the air is all ready and then when I'm when it's time to play I just remove the tongue and the air goes and that's how I do it so I'll give an example I hope I'll do it right <laughs> So the little ta that you hear, it's when I remove the tongue. It's not, I don't, don't go, I'll, I'll do it the other way if I just went like this. It works too, but this way it's more safe for me. You can also do a pe, you go pe, like this. Um... It's a question of taste, you know, and but the important thing to know is like the air has to be there, everything has to be ready, and it's about when you release the tongue. So even if, if you don't decide to put it there, just think of uh, if you want it to be precise, just removing it at the right time. Okay, so now I will continue. that first phrase there are dynamics that are important you can also play with your vibrato um, you can accelerate it decelerate it um, also I breathe a lot because it's a long phrase and I don't necessarily wait to be completely out of breath before I breathe so I take breaths in many places second bar just after the first note third bar after after the first note uh, fourth bar as well, fifth bar I play, I take two breaths, one after the C sharp, one after the F, well between the two Fs, and then I don't breathe until the end of that phrase. Um, yeah, and then I will continue. I did um, my crescendo a bit too early. I did too much of it, you know, because I'm supposed to go mezzo forte. If not, if I was in concert and I realized that, I would just go a little bit lower on the next crescendo. Just go high and then go back a bit lower and do another crescendo. But I'll start, I'll try to do it more um, uh, gradually.
here it's important to notice that just before Einleiten ruhig, which means um, ruhig is calm, and Einleiten is engaged, I think. So the three notes before ruhig, it's you're alone. So you can take your time, you can slow down a little bit, and the pianist will just come back with you on, uh, on ruhig. And uh, yeah, I also wrote just before before uh, this uh, bar that's um, a rest I wrote the rhythm just to make sure you know it goes da, da, na, bom, 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 bom. sometimes I like to write little things that the piano does so I'm I have no hesitation on the when I have to play in concert so I will do it again. There's a breath that I marked and I thought, oh, I don't really need it. But then later I realized, oh, I should have taken it. So really don't wait till you're completely out of breath to breathe. So I take one after the F, um, you know, after 10, one, one, two, three, four, fifth of 10, just after the F and the bar after, after the F and the bar after, after the F, always after the first beat. Uh, I'll do it and I'll try to breathe all those times. And here I try to get a very dark color. stop and I'll explain a little bit um so yeah that was way easier when I took all those breaths because I had a little bit of um of uh reserve so that's good um when the third after uh, 11 I wrote down what the piano does so I have a half note quarter note then I have on the next bar I didn't write it um, fifth of eleven, it goes tam, ta tam, ta tam, and then when you have the dotted half note, the piano doesn't play on the first beat; it plays on the second beat. So if you wait for the piano to be with you, you're you're gonna be late. So it's normal. You're first, then the piano, then you're alone for the two four. You're alone. Uh, so you take your time. Then the piano on the three four goes. Bum, bum, bum. then you're alone again and uh, that's when you go back to a 3-4 you're alone again for a little while At da, 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 da. you should really check the piano part and write it down and at the end of that when it goes here I wrote in my part tension because it's a very very tense part and with the chords that the piano is doing, it's it's a tensed, uh, yeah. So that's in between 11 and 12. So, yeah, it goes A, M, A, F, E flat. So 
Okay. Intensity there and tension. Um, yeah. So then I'm going to redo that from the first two four. Okay. And just before 12, I don't breathe there because I think it, it, you know, you have that C sharp that really wants to go to the D. That tension wants to be resolved on the D. So breathing there would kind of break it so I, I really write down in my part I make a line to make sure I don't breathe there uh, I breathe after the D okay so I'll do it from the first two four after 11 It, you see I breathe in many places because it's it's loud and you don't want to have to play a half you know you go all the way and I don't know if you noticed but just before 12 on that C sharp I was vibrating and then I I stopped vibrating to go to my D I think it I think it makes it interesting like I'll do it again <laughs> kind of makes it seem longer and um, yeah I like that I think in that in that movement, the dynamics are very important. We should try to exaggerate them. I don't know if I, exa I exaggerate them enough, uh, but really that's something I try to do. And uh, changing the colors, for me it's a very intense piece. It's um, yeah, I love that movement because it has that intensity and that um, some pain and. The year it was written in, like, I don't know, I decided to see it as um, conflict and, and stuff being unfair, you know, and the composer feeling that pain as an artist, I guess, and wanting to show it there. That's how I see it, you know. Um, so I'll, I'll take it from the 2-4 where just after where I stopped last here it's pianissimo but I kind of forgot you really have to sustain in pianissimo the air has to be sustained as much so I'll redo that part on the da, da, da. it's solo and then the piano goes back with the dum so it da, da, dum, bum, da, de, dum. yeah and the piano at 13 goes yeah it picks you up on your last note of the beat you know dum, da, da, dum, da, da, dum. So from there. I'm not sure. I'll I think the 
Brando was bugging me, I'll do it again. <laughs> the G sharp in the, sec in the second bar of 13 and I didn't do it there. I'll redo that part. But this time I didn't think about my vibrato as much. I was just letting it go and I think it was better. Sometimes you know when we overthink things we just make it more complicated, less beautiful I guess. make a color change there. between my G and my C, but I think it was okay. What tempo oh. do you put it at? Um, on the part, it's written around 80 per per uh, 8 notes. So, et, et va means approximately, you know. So it's around that, like what the composer wrote. As long as it's the composer who wrote it and not the editor, but I don't know. Um, I usually play it around that. Maybe I was a bit... I don't know if I was playing it at the same tempo. You see, I play it even uh, even slower. I guess it gives me a sense of, you know, having the time to really do the sound I want. But also in that part, it's written ruish. Ruish means um, calm. So... I tend to play those parts where it's calm a tiny bit slower. Okay, I'll do it again from 13. And I'll try at, at 13 to do it very, very um, transparent, the sound. <laughs> Last note, the piano plays after you. So you play your B, and then next beat, the piano comes in. Um, at the end, the last four bars, I wrote what the piano is doing in my part, because, you know, um, just to make sure I know what's going on. So Because the piano doesn't play a lot in those last bars, so that's why I know that we're together. Uh, is there any question about that? Peace? No. no. Is there other questions about yeah, Amethyst? Yeah, there's one question about Ambrosor. Um, um, how do you make sure you have the perfect Ambrosor? Hmm. Well, well, well. I don't know if it's perfect all the time. I um, Sometimes I take my flute and I look for it. You know, I look for my sound a little bit. Um, well, main thing, you don't want things to be in the way. So you don't want your lips to be in the way. The flute is an open instrument. So 
um, you don't want your lower lip to cover the hole too much. It's about a quarter to a third of the hole that has to be covered with your lower lip. Then you don't want your upper lip to go over either. So the upper lip stays close to the teeth and the lower lip um, depends also on, on the thickness of your lips. If it's a bit thick, you put it over. If it's very thin, you put it under. Just check in the mirror if, if your lip is going too much, is blocking your air or something and try different things to see what sounds best and um, try to be neutral. So if you're smiling, try to frown to bring it back to neutral. If you're frowning too much, smile a little bit just to bring it back to something pretty neutral. And then you need stability because if, if it's moving here like this, um, sometimes even finger technique can come and uh, disrupt the embouchure. So it's a whole balance of everything. If your posture is, is good and it's, you know, you can move, but here it shouldn't be moving. You know, this has to stay steady. Um, and then it's all about the air. And also you don't want your tongue to be in the way you try to keep it down. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And then you really need to have the air stream constant. That's the, for the sound, that's the best. But for the embouchure, that would be the basic idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, people tell me that uh, because I play the clarinet, I can't play flute because of how I've developed my muscle memory. Do you believe that it would be hard for a clarinet player to learn to play the flute? No, that's weird because there's a lot of people who play oh, uh, many triplers, instruments. Yeah, yeah triplers, people play triplers. flute and sax and clarinet and very well in bands and stuff. And yeah, then I don't know. Usually they don't have exactly the sound of a let's say of a classical flutist, but they're not classical flutists either. So I guess they're not going for that because usually they're jazz players. Their sound might be a little bit different, but um no i think you, you can you can learn different instruments it's totally possible um do you keep your throat always open when you change even when you change the sound color yeah i will change the op the opening in my mouth but the throat stays open okay. so i will go and go from more like this to more like that mm -hmm. Maybe my tongue will move a bit forward. I think that's what I do sometimes to change also the speed of the air. My tongue moves in. But I'm not sure I'm doing that because the other day I was wondering. Well, everything moves. So it moves with, like, if I move my, my lower jaw, my tongue follows. So it's not really that I move my tongue in my mouth. Don't, uh, don't listen to that. But yeah, it's, it's the mouth, but the throat stays open. Okay. Well, that's it for now. Do you want to do third movement uh, and then we have questions? I can do the next movement now, I guess. Okay, do you want to do French Orchestra and then we'll go on to the next one? Okay. So, thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the box below. And uh, if you liked it, please like it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And see you next time.